um, most of the topic I got it was I got an idea from future home sermons. Uh, but let, let, let me just give a background. Um, the prophet mentioned about an area of 1,500 square miles. Before the flood, there was a river flowing from going into Eden. And the area was very big. Uh, the dry desert places you know right now in Arabia, that is uh, not like that before the flood. Or even before the fall of man. So that's the water that came out and water uh, that parted into four heads, they covered that big area. Because the big area there uh, is not the uh, desert places yet, as we see today. Uh, the paradise of God, God's delight in Eden, where He placed the man, that will be the condition in the eternal age. Uh, the New Jerusalem has many aspects going down into the eternal age. And what was lost in Eden will be restored back in the eternal age. So from Eden, that river of water, the prophet mentioned about uh, the Mount of Olives cleaving in half and all the waters gushing out. Um, some have understood as though the New Jerusalem will come out from the ground. Okay? But if you mention a big uh, a geographical area, then you can understand it is the same garden of delight that was lost. So, after the fall, that river disappeared. But when Christ comes back, uh, you can read that in Ezekiel 47. Uh, let me just write it here. Prophet mentioned this in the future, but not the verse. Zechariah chapter 14. When Jesus Christ comes back down on earth, Mount of Olives will cleave in half, and there will be rivers of living water flowing out from there, and all the desert places will come alive back then. In Revelation chapter 22, that's the same scenario within. Uh, could you open Revelation chapter 22? Now, here you can see the symbolical language from the natural to spiritual. Where's the location of the garden? It will be somewhere there in Jerusalem. That's why there is this terminology in Jerusalem. If it's such a big geographical area, Revelation 22. So, um, then the natural is uh, a type of the spiritual. And, uh, let's read that. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the land. That's the same description in Ezekiel 47 and Zechariah 14. Uh, that's where the Mount of Olives will cleave in half. And the location, if you look at the map, let me draw the Mount of Olives. This is Mount of Olives. Uh, let's say the mountain is big and the uh, Zion. The temple is located somewhere eastward. If the mountain will cleave in half, waters will come from the temple and water all the desert places in Arabia. Now there's a typology that will be, this is this will take place literally, but there's a typology to the church because the typology of the woman in the well out of her belly shall flow for rivers of living water. The same thing from Christ, uh, from God to Christ, the land, then uh, the land. Then, now the picture here is now from the bride that has become the New Jerusalem. The bride will be um, the manifestation or what others would call theophany of God in flowing that anointing uh, in this new age. New, uh, sorry, New Jerusalem, in this uh, new heaven and new earth. Let's read verse 2. In the midst of the street of it and either side of the river was there the tree of life which bear twelve minor fruits, yielded her fruit every month, leaves of the tree for the healing of the nations. There is a scripture in 
uh, chapter 21, there's no more pain or sorrow or death. And God will wipe away all tears in their eyes. Uh, the fruits, it's very familiar. There, the man, there's a mention of the tree of life. That's why there is a reference back there in Eden. And the fruits, there is a spiritual fruit we know as the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians. So here you can see uh, the spiritualization of this new Jerusalem. Let's go to verse 3. And there shall be no more curse but the throne of God and the blood shall be in it. And he, it, this verse, this chapter is talking about the new Jerusalem. And his servant shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forest. There shall be no night there, there shall, they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Now, the city where the Lamb is the light, God, the light in there is the temple, and the palaces in the city are the believers. There is a carnal interpretation by the Pentecostals that uh, it's a literal building of gems and stones. Uh, you're so rich that you're walking through streets, literal streets of gold. Or you can just imagine a big UFO coming down with <laughs> the great city. So, but this is spiritual, okay? So, um, the prophet likened that in the change of the earth. So, from Eden, after the fall, there was a change. The prophet mentioned about this earth will not disappear, will not be replaced, but it will be, uh, what's the right term? Changed, converted, renovated. So, uh, there's this uh, word for the believer, parerekomai, or all things are passed away. The word passed away, parerekomai. So he said about the kings of earth will bring their glories unto it. Who would they be? Those are people in their natural bodies being ruled by the bride and the lamb. It's not just in the millennium but also in the eternal age. So let me give some timeline. This is Eden. Uh, let's say this is the church age. Then this is the millennium. And there's great white throne. This is the eternal age. Uh, how God would uh, present this new Jerusalem in He used the after the fall, he called out the Israelites. He called it as a mountain, a city. Uh, the physical natural Jerusalem would be tied to the church. And that uh, physical, spiritual, uh, sorry, physical Jerusalem will have a type. Uh, let me just uh, mention some of the things uh, uh, talked about in future home. Uh, John chapter 14. Um, in my father's house are many mansions. I'll give you a picture of the city. Let's say this is the city. Inside the city there is the temple. So, this is like the presentation of in my father's house are many mansions, palaces. The many palaces are the different uh, residences of the physical literal city. If you imagine our bodies are the, the temple of the living God. But Jesus Christ is the main cornerstone of the temple. So, God and the Lamb is the light of the city, and the rest of those in the city uh, are enjoying that light. And even from that city, it will light the whole world. And he also mentioned about the coming down of Jerusalem, New Jerusalem. Here, after the tribulation, there is this uh, uh, coming down from heaven, Christ and the armies behind him, uh, it's also New Jerusalem. There's also another coming down, like a procession, not, not, not before the white throne judgment, after the white throne judgment. This is in Revelation 21 and Revelation 22. Here, this is Revelation chapter 19. 
Now there's a description, one scriptural description about the uh, New Jer spiritual Jerusalem typified from this natural Jerusalem typified as heavenly Jerusalem. Let's open uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. Here, uh, Paul is going to speak some symbolical languages. He's going to use some natural uh, things on earth. He's going to typify it. to the general assembly. Uh, let's go to verse 22. 22. Ye are come unto Mount Zion. That's a literal mountain. Under the city of the living God. The Jews would think of the physical city. The heavenly Jerusalem. And to an innumerable company of angels. Now you begin to see he's not the physical Jerusalem here on earth. And I'd like to quote what Christ said. Uh, the art is coming where you will no longer worship in that mountain or in this mountain, Samaria or Jerusalem. But worshiping God in spirit and in truth. For the true bride, uh, for the bride of Christ that will be taken off from church ages. They are the first who will uh, find the city. And be part of it. The Jews today are looking forward to the physical city. And God's going to allow them to rebuild the temple. And when they rebuild the temple, when God comes down, I'm sorry, when that city comes down, He will come down on that same geographical spot. You read in the millennium, we're in uh, the law shall go forth from Zion. The, the rule in the millennium, the law will come, it will come from Jerusalem. And if you read the rebellion in after the millennium, when Satan will tempt those, uh, those on earth, they will go against the camp of the saints. It's also in that place. So, uh, there's Armageddon here. There's uh, Gogan Marco here. The same thing here before the right from judgment. And you see, it's all the same place. It, it, the same geographical spot that the Jews are buying for, the whole world is buying for, that. the desirable nations are buying for that uh, geographical spot. That's the place also where God will manifest His, uh, His land and the bride for the world to see and to end all world conflicts here. So let's continue reading. Verse 23. Now here you see Mount Zion, the holy city, the heavenly Jerusalem, is called the General Assembly. Verse 23. The church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, to God the judge of all, the spirits of judgment. Now, who are the members of this city? It's innumerable company of angels, those saints that were have been regenerated, Christ the Lamb, and to God Himself. Now, uh, some denominations uh, would teach about the measurement in Revelation chapter 22. I first read this from Richard Gunn and I was surprised. I read, I, that's what the prophet taught. <laughs> uh, I read it in the future home. He said, you could imagine a cube. And when I talk about this before in the radio, I didn't know where Bernard taught that in the future home. And he said, uh, the city lies four square. You can imagine it as a cube, but it's better to imagine it as a pyramid. And more so in the stature of the perfect man. He talked about going to perfection, the capstone of love. You see the spiritual symbolism here. Now, if you imagine a pyramid, then there is a hierarchy from God to Christ sorry, and the redeemed saints, then those whom they will reign or rule in the millennium and in the eternal age. What's the difference between millennium and eternal age? Millennium is a rule of the rod of iron. In the eternal age, it is a rule of love. There's no need for it's no more, no more compulsion. So that is why it's called a pyramid. It's a good, better description than a cube. Because there is a hierarchy from God 
to Christ and to the Lamb, and those that will be reigned. Let's read the part that they will reign. I think there's in chapter 22. They will reign forever. Revelation chapter 22. Now, uh, the prophet mentioned about the coming down of that uh, New Jerusalem, that anointing. He likened it to the Spirit of God coming down to Jesus Christ, indwelling Him. He likened it here. Um, Revelation 22. And they, they will reign. Yeah, maybe, go, let's go up. Rain. The word rain. I forgot the first word mentioned. I read before. I read it before that they will rain forever. This was not printed correctly, so I am in a hard time remembering everything. So let's go to um, Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21 could be an event that Christ is coming down with all these things to take over the world. Now, you notice here in chapter 21, there is two dissensions. It starts from verse 1. Revelation chapter 21. Let's go to chapter 21. Two minutes. Okay. So I'm just going to summarize this. You notice there is uh, I saw you have the earth for the first time the first earth will pass away. That's what I recommend. The earth is being renovated. There was no more sea. Verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city in Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride. Would you call that to the building? No. The physical building just like the spiritual. He gave it the time in the old. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, they shall be his people, God himself shall be with them and be their God. Isn't that the description of what I look? So, um, the tabernacle of God is with men, applies to many things. God tabernacle in Christ, fellowshipping with men. But here, it's not just God in Christ, it's also in the bride, in the church. What he poured into Christ, he poured out into the church. The church now is the tabernacle of God is with men. The presence of God will be felt by those kings. By the way, here in the millennium, they are heavens that will just, will just be taught by the law. But in the eternal age, everyone would know the Lord. But everyone will have their own ranks. So, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Okay, let's skip the measurements. Because we don't have much time to talk about the walls and gates. Let's jump to the second dissension. In verse 8. So verse 9. There's another coming down. So after the millennium, there's the rebellion, then they will be burned up. As they try to subvert the camp of the saints, a geographical spot. Then fire comes down, destroys them. Then there's the uh, white throne judgment. After the white throne judgment, after all things were thrown in the lake of fire, those who were supposed to be, and those who will be allowed are uh, written in whose names are written in the book of life, allowed to enter the eternal age. And after all those things are over, then here, and here is the last word, uh, wording for that, the fearful, the unbelieving, abominable murderers, poor mongers, servers, idolaters, shall have that part in the lake of fire which burneth with fire and brings home, which is the second death. There's a scripture that talks about outside the city are dogs. If there are dogs outside the city, the new Jerusalem will encompass the whole earth. That's why there's a talk about new heaven and new earth. The, the tabernacle of God is with men. The bride is not, is not just uh, limited to a single geographical spot. It will encompass the whole earth. The outside the earth, the earth, no more death and hell, no more Hades of earth. It will be thrown out of the earth. Okay, now, John was uh, talking about the seven gels. That's Ted uh, invited him to show him the uh, new dissension of the bride. I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife, verse 10. And he carried me away to a great and high mountain, showing the great city of Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Okay, I might finish my time is up. So that's, um, I'll just leave it to your own study. God bless you all.